Hey guys, Dr. Will here from Miami Spine and Performance in Hollywood, Florida. Probably the most common thing that I get asked, other than what's the best type of mattress, is how do I continue to train my lower body when I have back pain, right? Lower back pain is one of the most common, if not the most common orthopedic complaint that people have in the country. It's the number one healthcare spend in the United States, so it's very, very important that not only do we treat lower back pain, but we learn how to train around it so that we can continue to get our body that good exercise that we need to be healthy while we're going to our chiropractor and getting it treated. So when it comes to lower back pain, of course, number one is you need to be evaluated by a physician and you wanna get guidelines from your doctor. With that being said, there are some really strong principles that I believe in and that are scientifically backed that will allow you to continue to train not only your lower body, but your upper body and your core without aggravating your lower back pain, particularly disc pain. So let's start with the exercises that are typically causing these issues. So the most common exercise that I see that's causing this kind of disc-based back pain is going to be squatting, right? Specifically squatting with a barbell on your back. So if you're somebody that's having lower back pain that's kind of keeping you in this type of posture or lower back pain that's radiating into your butt, radiating down your leg, the first thing that you want to remove is any exercises where you're loading weight directly onto your spine, right? So you want to take that barbell off of your back and use something like dumbbells, maybe a goblet position or a machine or a, um, you know, a, a belt squat. You need to get that weight off of your back because the discs themselves are not very good at responding to compressive load. So when you put the barbell on your back, you're just squishing that disc. You're creating a lot of pressure and a lot of inflammation in the area. The second one that I see oftentimes people are injuring themselves with is the deadlift. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with deadlifting. There's nothing about the deadlift that uh, should predispose you to back pain. It usually has something to do with either technique or fatigue or too much weight, of course. So number one, if you're gonna do deadlifting, maybe opt for something like a trap bar deadlift, something like a dumbbell Romanian deadlift, instead of just a barbell deadlift from the ground if you're having lower back pain, right? The trap bar deadlift will allow you to continue to train your legs and posterior chain without putting so much pressure on the discs. Likewise, there's things like Nordic leg curls, seated leg curls, uh, back extensions, GHD extensions. There's a lot of ways to train your posterior chain without putting that stress through the lower back. Um, likewise, Fatigue is also a very big uh, issue with lower back pain. Unfortunately, you know, within CrossFit, this is a big issue. Now, um, I love CrossFit. I used to compete in CrossFit, um, and I think it's been great for getting people involved in exercise, but now we're starting to see again, the, the quality of sort of coaching has gone down a little bit. Classes are extremely busy, and people are you know deadlifting weight that they probably shouldn't be at five, six in the morning, and they're hurting their lower back. And I don't like to see people hurting their back like that. So we want to try to avoid really high repetition deadlifts and things like that, especially when we're on a, a rubber floor using rubber plates and we're getting that nice bounce that we all like because it lets us lift more weight. But every time we hit the ground and bounce like that, we're putting pressure through our disc. Okay. So those are just some guidelines around squatting and deadlifting. I think if we can eliminate those two, then we're left with a lot of really good options. Okay. So when it comes to the things that we should be doing, if we're having disc-based lower back pain, number one is going to be, we have to be incorporating core training into all of our workouts, at least all of our gym workouts, right? But core training doesn't necessarily mean um, crunches and sit-ups and leg lifts, right? Core training also means things like planks, side planks, farmer's carries, pal-off press, landmine exercises. There's a million different core variations out there. Um, you know, you guys can look on my YouTube channel for more ideas. You can work with a trainer. Um, you can, you know, ask people at your gym for some ideas. But you have to be training your midsection to some degree, right? Specifically train it for stability so that you can build nice armor around the disc. That's going to be the number one thing that's going to protect you from this kind of disc-based lower back pain, okay? Number two is when you're training your lower body, opt for more single leg exercises, right? When I'm in like a split lunge stance like this, I'm actually locking out my pelvis and my lower back. So I'm able to load this exercise with a lot of weight without putting a lot of pressure through my back. So I always recommend patients opt for exercises like reverse lunges, walking lunges, step ups, step downs, Cossack squats, 
single leg glute bridges and things like that, right? By using one leg, we can still build really strong legs. We can build good quads, good hamstrings uh, without putting all that stress through our lower back, right? The next principle is when it comes to conditioning, we don't want to do a lot of heavy loaded conditioning work, right? I, I'm a big proponent of, you know, having people train conditioning. I think that there's probably the pendulum has swung a little bit too much towards uh, maybe hypertrophy and bodybuilding and strength training. Not enough people are training their heart, training their cardiovascular system. So with all of my clients, all, everybody that I do remote programming for, they're doing a lot of conditioning work. But I'm not having them lift heavy weights or do exercises during the conditioning that are stressful on the back, right? So for me, good conditioning options are things like the assault bike, the jump rope, rower, burpees, air squats, and, and different ex maybe core exercises as well, right? So a lot of times what I'll have patients do is I'll actually have them combine conditioning with core training. So I'll have them do a hard 30-second sprint on the bike and then a 30-second plank. And then a hard sprint on the bike, 30-second side plank. Hard sprint on the bike, 30-second farmer's carry, right? So that way you're breathing heavy, but you're also having to stabilize, right? So this is a really, really good way to train your body to stabilize and be strong under fatigue. So that way, when you go for a run, when you go back to CrossFit, when you go hiking with your family, now your back is strong and durable, and even as it gets fatigued, it's still able to protect the disc, right? Now, when it comes to upper body exercises, the two things that I typically see people aggravating their back with when it comes to upper body is overhead pressing and bent over rows. Again, there's nothing inherently wrong with either of those exercises. There's a lot of value in doing things like bent over rows. There's a lot of value in overhead pressing. I know it's kind of gone out of style to push weight overhead, but it's a really important movement pattern. It's actually important for us as humans to be strong at putting weight overhead and being able to hold it. The issue people run into is if they don't have good mobility in their spine or in their shoulders, they'll press weight overhead and they'll arch their lower back in order to get the weight overhead. So instead of a good lockout position, you'll see something like this. Same thing, if there's too much weight, you'll see people, they'll try to turn an overhead press into a bench press, basically. They'll arch themselves so much that now they're benching the bar. Likewise, if they're under fatigue and they lose their core stability, you'll start to see this hyperextension of the back. That's gonna pinch the disc, it's gonna pinch the joints of the low back, it's gonna make your low back very, very unhappy. So typically I have people opt for things like a single arm Arnold press, for example. So we have, we're in a split stance maybe, and we have a dumbbell and we're locking out like this in a really, really controlled position. So we're not doing overhead push press and things like that. We're just pushing the dumbbell overhead, just like so. So we can get that strength through the shoulders and the triceps, but we're not stressing the lower back so much, okay? The next one that I talked about is that bent over row, right? So people will do barbell rows and instead of using their lats, their rhomboids, posterior delts, we'll see them do this kind of thing and they'll use their lower back, right? That's a big no-no and that's gonna cause a lot of issues in your low back. If you think about it, you spend 60 minutes commuting to work, you sit at your desk for eight hours, 60 minutes commuting back, you go to the gym and you start asking your back to stabilize while you pull 135, 185, 225 pounds. At that point, that disc is already probably on the verge of inflammation and you're gonna set it over the edge. So not only do we wanna use good technique, but maybe we wanna use some alternative ways of doing rows, right? So I'm a big proponent of doing things like single arm dumbbell rows, chest supported rows, cable rows, exercises where we're not putting our lower back under so much strain. If I'm holding a heavy barbell, my lower back really has to support that. Versus if I'm in a single arm dumbbell row, I can use my hand and I can really get a great contraction in my lap without having to put stress through my lower back. So I would encourage you guys to maybe look for alternative ways of training your back and your shoulders that are gonna um, reduce the strain on your lower back. And that's one of the things that I incorporate with all my remote training clients is I have a huge library of exercises um, so that you can continue to build muscle while protecting your lower back. If you have you know, a history of, of prior injuries or if you have a current injury you're dealing with, what I really specialize in is allowing you to train, continue to grow muscle, continue to get in great shape while concurrently improving your injuries, right? We don't have to stay out of the gym for six months, get out of our routine because then it's really hard to get back, right? The best thing to do is to stay in the gym, stay on your routine, make modifications to protect your spine so that you can stay in great shape. 
So just to review guys, my main principles are, number one, eliminate the exercises that are causing the pain. Squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing, rowing, those are the most common ones. If you know that an exercise is causing you pain, take that one out, find a modification. Number two, core training every single day. Number three, um, low impact cardiovascular training. And then number four is going to be incorporating a lot of single leg work. Single leg RDL, lunges, step ups, pistol squats, all these ways that you can improve your hip mobility, you can improve stability, you can make your knees happy, you can build nice strong legs, but you don't put stress on your lower back. So if you're somebody that's dealing with back pain while training and you'd like some specific advice or specific programming for you, you can reach out to me at Miami Spine and Performance on Instagram. You can send me an email, you can send me a direct message. I'm happy to help you. Um, please drop a like and comment, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. We're looking to increase our subscribers this year, so tell your friends and we'll continue to put out great content. Thank you so much.